couple of things about time. Time is life. If I ask you how old are you, what I'm asking you is, what is your life? And you would say, my life is 80 years old, or 30 years old, or 15. Life is also stopped by time. When you die, time stops. In essence, death is life leaving time. And time is temporary, but life is eternal. We were put in time to live a portion of life. I thank God for time. Time is a relief. So God created time by literally designing the universe to keep time. Many scientists interpret the universe as a big clock. And they say that someone must have wound it up. They try to explain that there must have been a creator because the universe is running with such precision that the planets not only are revolving around stars, but they don't clash into each other. Someone seemed to have set this in motion. And God had designed all of that so that there can be measure for days and years. The books you read, I mean, I've seen people read them love novel books. A love novel book don't take you to your goals. You know, Sam kissed Susan and they went for a cruise along the river. Listen, man, you broke, you need another book. You gotta revalue your time, change your library, go dump some books when you go home tonight and buy all of my books. People spend all kind of money on magazines and you still got problem. And you must develop a sense of significance in your life. Discover that you are important to the human race, you are important to the world, you are important to your universe. So if you keep attracting a gang of people around you at work, everybody want to bring gossip to you, you know, cackling, duck, 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 duck. you are in bad company. You can become a victim of time. Write this down, please. You can never stop time. You can also never control it. You can't resist it. You can't compromise with, never compromise with time. You can never slow time down. You can never speed up time. Until death, you are stuck in time. You are victims. And therefore, all you have to do to make time your friend is to manage it. He said, okay, the average age of a human, God says, will be between 70 and 80. Okay, so if you're 30, guess how much you got left? Do with that. If you're 40, how many you got left? 30. And so Ephesians 5 says, wherefore, stay awake. Awake thou who sleepest, and arise from the dead. Even Christ himself wants to shine upon you. Verse 15. Look therefore carefully at how you walk, not as unwise, but as what? Wise. And then he says what? Redeem the time, because the days are full of evil. Redeem the time. I was doing this with my life for the last 40 years, maximizing every minute of my life. I started when I was a teenager. When my friends were playing marbles, I was reading the Bible. When my friends were looking for a girlfriend, I was writing songs. When people, when people were, were reading magazines, I was reading scripture. So don't get jealous of me. I use my time differently. I am a product of how I use my time. Your life is how you use your time. Redeeming the time, using it properly, making sure that you invest it in a way that it benefits you. Because, you know, I was like you, you know, I want to be like, you know, I want to impress people, I want to get to give, I'm, I'm a lover, so I give to everybody. So I give to everybody who is poor, I give them. The guy come to me half drunk, he said, give me a dollar, I give him a dollar. The guy come to me smoking grass, he said, I need some food, I give him money. Your perception of who you are, you've got to change it. And most of our perceptions are other people's concepts of us, and therefore we don't have self-concept, we got other concepts. you got to discover that you were born for something, some reason, there's some purpose for your life. That's the way life is. You are no different from a seed. If you don't discover that, you'll always have a job, and we'll bury you in an average grave with an average tombstone. Deep inside of you is a person no one knows yet. Guess what I had to do at age 25 in order to change my own future? I had to change my mind. I had to change my thinking. I had to change my philosophy. I was messed up on what was causing my problem. And once I got that straightened out, that all the stuff I blamed, the government and taxes and 
the marketplace and the economy and things cost too much, negative relatives, cynical neighbors. Once I got rid of that and started going for where the real problem was, which was me, I'm telling you, my life exploded into change. My bank account changed immediately. My income changed immediately. My whole life took on a whole new look and color immediately. And the early results I got from making these philosophical changes tasted so good, I've never stopped the process from that day until this. Now's the chance to change, process all this information. And if you will change, everything will change for you. Your bank account will change, your income will change, your future will change, the ability to acquire your dreams will change, it'll all change if you will change. And have a chance to transform your life, change your life, set your goals, and see what you can accomplish. And now let's go through the scenario of the seasons. Life and business is like the seasons, let's cover them. Here's number one, major lesson in life to learn. Learn how to handle the winters. Don't join an easy crowd. You won't grow. Go where the expectations are high. Go where the demands are high. Go where the pressure's on to perform, to grow, to change, to develop, to read, to study, to develop skills. I belong to a small group. We do business around the world. You cannot believe the expectations at that level. I look, I look back on all the things in my life that I thought that should have been a failure, that should have been a failure, that should have been. But when I really analyzed it, I realized those were teaching moments, those were molding moments, those were moving moments. And I realized had that not happened, I wouldn't have been ready for this moment. Or had that situation not gone on, I wouldn't have been ready to go here. Had I not been able to live at that altitude, I wouldn't have been able to stand at this altitude. So what happened to me, as I look back on all those moments, I, could, I don't call them failures. I call them the grace of God because it had brought me right where I needed to be. Don't give up. Don't, it, I know this sounds simple, but don't give up. If you go to bed with it and you wake up with it and you can't shake it, you go get a job and that dream is still in the back of your head. You, you're working for somebody else, but that dream is still in the back of your head. You're getting up every morning, five in the morning, going on somebody else's job. And when I think about Joseph, he went through so much before he, became, he got into his promise. He was in jail, he got all these things happened to him, but, but when it got really bad and he gave up or wanted to give up, the dream reminded him that he can go on. So if it's in you and you can't shake it and you dream about it, and when you want to walk away from it, you still dream. That's God telling you to keep going. And if I can tell you anything else, please keep going. There are people who, whose lives and destiny are tied into you. Don't give up. You're going to be all right. I don't care what it looks like. It's going to be all right. Tyler, you don't understand. It's been difficult. It's been hard. God will provide. You need to be persistent. That means don't accept no as an answer.